Negative. What are we supposed to do? Nothing. We can't do anything until we can get over, right? No. Yeah. 118, it says. I decided I would like to quit RV life now. What is it? I, I had to smoke it bad. Three and a half years, we've never had problems like this. Mm -hmm. So, oh, we're having issues here. Oh, oh, more than just AC issues. Let me yeah. tell you something about this, this RV park. As you guys probably know by now, we share everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, all of that. And we don't mind sharing the negative stuff that happens to us because that's just part of RVing and everybody can hopefully learn from that. Yeah, we roll with the punches a lot, as yeah. you guys know. And that's a big part of RVing. We've always said that. Always be ready for something to break. Just roll with it. How you deal with it determines how it affects you. Yeah, we were rolling the cameras right as all of this was happening. So you're catching us, and especially me, <laughs> at you know maybe not my best moment because I was mad, I was frustrated, I was angry, yeah. and so you're going to see that, and you don't see that very often. And fortunately, we don't have things like this happen to us very often. And so. You know, this is just the reality and, and we're just going to show you the truth of what happened. So we're leaving Lone Rock Beach. Technically, we're leaving Page, Arizona, because if you watched that, you saw that we moved from Lone Rock Beach, <laughs> so uh, yeah. our boondocking fail. We're leaving one area where we had quite a few problems between us and Phil and Stacy. Lots mm -hmm. of problems, right? Yeah. Moving on to hotter places. We didn't really think this through when we planned it out. Also, my outfit. There's a purpose for it. This isn't normally how I roll, you know? Just channeling Willie Nelson and all. So we were leaving bright and early in the morning. Our goal was to head out around 7 a.m. because it's hot already at 7 a.m. Mm. And packing up the RVs and getting everything ready and loading up the bike or the tow vehicle for Phil and Stacy, it's just hot. We were still caravanning, which thankfully. Is, yeah, as which you're is fun, see. yeah. And it's fun and we really enjoy caravanning with Phil and Stacy. We're on the walkie-talkies together. Mm -hmm. How are you guys on fuel? Will you need to stop at some point today? We have three quarters of the tank. We will need to stop somewhere. If you plan on caravanning with other people, whether it's just one other RV or multiple RVs, have a way to communicate that's not just your cell phone because, you know, cell phones can go out of range. Right, going through the mountains, things like that. You right. don't have it. Radios are good. Where is this hot place of Hades that we're gonna camp? <laughs> it's Vegas. Why? Yeah, I don't know. So lesson number one, don't plan to go to Vegas in the summer. I will say we do end up having a really good time oh, yeah. while we're in Vegas. So stay tuned for all that. We had some commitments and things that we were doing in Vegas, particularly at that time. In hindsight, we suggest don't do Vegas in the heat of the summer. because this was like right at the beginning of July time frame, So it was hot, hot, hot. And also something that we would like to try and haven't yet is there's an app called Glimpse. And this is an app that our pilot at the Balloon Fiesta uses with his chase crew. Mm -hmm. And that's how they communicate because if you lose each other in route, 
you can still see where the other people are because you can see it in the app. So yeah, it's and that happened cool. a couple times with mm -hmm. us. When we're staggered by probably a, a few hundred yards, Phil likes to give some buffer back there, which is smart. Sometimes we would get through some yellow lights. <laughs> that would, would be red, red by light. the time they would get there, so. Yeah. And it's yellow. Hi. No, I got you again. Go ahead, we'll catch up. That happened a couple of times. Yeah, at least three, I think. Sorry, guys. Just under 300 miles to get to Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, getting there is similar to getting the other way. We had to go through uh, Arizona and then Utah, then Arizona, and then Utah again, and then... Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> and just like that, we're back in Utah. Welcome back to Arizona again. <laughs> we left Arizona, we went into Utah, and then we left Utah, went into Arizona, and then we left Arizona and came back to Utah, and now we left Utah and we're back in Arizona. <laughs> we're making our way to Las Vegas, Nevada, but it's like this through the border. It's weird. Luckily, we did have Phil and Stacy traveling behind us during this trip because we got a little message from them on the walkies that, um, hey guys, you're smoking pretty bad on the left-hand side. <laughs> yeah. Smoking is not good in an RV. Oh so. my gosh, of course, panicking, right? Because we are Coming getting down. fairly close to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so the traffic's getting busier and we're sort of at a standstill because we were coming from a steep grade and we were looking for a place to pull over to see what the heck, what was something on fire? What was smoking? What was going on? It was a little yeah. bit nerve wracking. Any, uh, any kind of alarm on your DSP? Negative. I wonder if one of them did lock up or something. Still smoking pretty good. Great. Well, I don't mean, I don't, what, what are we supposed to do? Nothing. We can't do anything until we can get over, right? No. I decided I would like to quit RV life now. I see a clear up here on the right. We finally found some, an yeah. area that, of course, I didn't like, but it it's is side, what it yeah, is. Yeah, side of the interstate is not the, the most perfect place, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. Are you going to go in that patch right there? Yeah. But they might not be able to get over there. I'm gonna pull off to the right here. If this foot I can't tell which tire it is. And it really wasn't a big deal, but it did turn out that, you know, I wasn't really thinking about a lot of mountain driving and I didn't turn on our engine brake yeah. on our truck. So I was doing a lot more braking of the brake brakes and our disc brakes are really good, but they got really hot mm -hmm. and they started smoking. Because remember, it was about 118 degrees outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was hot. It was super hot. Yeah. I told Stacy to grab the fire extinguisher. That's it. I mean, it was smoking. We had no idea it was smoking. We didn't see it or nothing, no alarm. Nothing on the TST. Well, but it really wasn't a big deal. It was just an oversight on my part. If I had had the engine brake on, I would have been using less brakes. And I don't, honestly, I don't know why I didn't think of that. When we were coming down the hill, I was having to ride my brakes quite a bit. Uh, and then I realized when we stopped at the rest area, our engine brake turned off. So I'm hoping that I just got the brakes hot, is all. I'm thinking that's what it is. It's, it's, it started to go away when we, when we let up. 260 at the center. This trip. We're bad for each other. What do you mean? I, what the heck? But if it wasn't for you guys behind us, we wouldn't have known about the smoke issue. That's true. So maybe that's true. you're good Maybe one. it's a good thing. Yeah. But 106. 106! Yeah, that's what I just said. I, How cool are we gonna get them sitting here when it's over 100 just sitting? We just hit this steep grade all of a sudden and we were going down it and I was having to brake a lot because of the traffic. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they started smoking, but luckily that's all it was. 
I got our laser temp gun out and checked all of them, made sure they weren't like super crazy, like fire yeah. engine red hot. Yeah, and it didn't affect the TPMS at all because it didn't really affect the tire temps yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, just so the brake, the, the disc brakes. It was, I think the most stressful part is just being on the side of a busy interstate and you're coordinating with the people you're caravanning with because they also have to have room to pull over so they can either help fix what's going on or help if we need a ride somewhere or whatever yeah, it might yeah. be. We had to make sure that they had room. So they said it was smoking pretty bad. Does Downhill. the engine brake go off by itself? If you, when you turn the engine off? Oh, so if the engine brake, if the engine brake was on, it might not have used the disc brakes as much. Right. Okay. Yeah. Part of our hitching checklist is tow haul mode and engine brake if we're in hills or mountains yeah. like we are now. And I just didn't do that after our lunch stop. I, oh. just, I just went, so. Okay. That's what it was. And then even getting back on the highway is nerve wracking as well, because like I said, it was busy yeah. and there were very few breaks in the traffic. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, we need a lot of space to get and, going. And you also want to pull over in a location where you, your area behind you is not blind. Like you don't want to pull over right over the top mm -hmm. of a hill because then, you know, you might be trying to pull out and someone comes over. So yeah. you want to pull over somewhere where you can see a good distance behind you. Yeah, my least favorite part is that pulling off and getting back on the highway, but you did great. All right, after this, semi-truck, go ahead. Yep. Go on. The red car just got over, so we, I think we're both be good. Do you think that we should just go straight? I'm just gonna go on straight. Yeah, I think we're good here. And yeah, he's gonna find us. There's a perfect gap. Just to reiterate, uh -huh. if we didn't know that, that the brake was smoking like that and we kept riding that way. I probably would have just cooled off. Because I, I had already turned on the engine brake. Oh. Uh, right right before he said that. Oh, okay. But if you didn't, if you hadn't realized that the engine brake wasn't on and we kept riding like that, that could have been bad news, right? If we were going downhill, yeah. But I would have I would have recognized I, I recognized on that first downhill slope that our engine brake wasn't on. Yeah. <laughs> I just put my arm out the window to film the sign coming into Nevada and it's so hot that my, my arm got so hot for like 30 seconds. Finally made it into Vegas where the traffic was terrible. Yeah, luckily at least their roads weren't super, super bad or super tight. It was just dealing with the traffic. It's just standstill traffic, mm -hmm. stop and go, stop and go. And of course, you know, we've been traveling all day. So we're tired, we're cranky, it's hot. It's hot. But at least we can communicate with Phil and Stacy and make some jokes and just sort of, <laughs> you know, make light of the situation yeah. a little bit. Just loving it, loving it. Oh, thank clean, you. Cleaning that elbow. Thank you. I appreciate it. Our truck now says 120 degrees. What are we doing? Do you think we get to check in without having to get out? Yay! So we pull in to the RV resort. Yes, you can see firsthand that we pulled in with a really good attitude and we were really positive and our first experience and first interaction at this park was really good. Yeah, they're real nice. And the guy at the gate was very friendly and very helpful mm -hmm. and I even say like, oh, I feel really good about this. Hello. A little warm, huh? <laughs> Thank you for not having us have to get out of the truck. Yeah. Hello, vicious man eater. You. I know she is. You should be yeah. careful. Oh, I, yeah. I, I, they I'm have a pretty I'm vicious one too. The jugular's protected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we didn't come into this park with an attitude or a chip on our shoulder yeah. or angry about anything. Like we were starting fresh. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I think if you look back on footage and you say, "Well, I was already in a bad mood when we arrived. No, Maybe I, remember I did something there. wrong." Well, you everything. guys are so nice. Alrighty, I know. So, oh, I can't even find, I get chills just even, thinking about it. Even in this heat, you're so <laughs> nice. Yeah, exactly. All right, folks, enjoy your Thanks. Day. Thanks. Seriously.
I have to say, I don't think that these trees are gonna do much for us for shade. So we pull into our first site and we start hooking up. <laughs> Did I mention it's 120 out? And we're hooking up and we have bad voltage. We're talking like 101, 103 volts. And if you know anything about electricity, an AC unit is gonna pull a certain number of watts. If it can't get that wattage from your proper 120 volts, it makes up the difference in amperage. Mm -hmm. That increased amperage can blow your breakers inside, it can blow the breakers on the pedestal, and it's gonna break something. Nothing yet? Uh, it's on, but now, so I got the AC to come on, but now this blue, see we've only got we have 112 volts on line one now, but we only have 105, 104 on line two. The voltage goes down, the amperage has to go up to make stuff run. It's tripped our breaker once, it's so stinking hot. But I've only got 104 volts on line two. Phil and Stacy were having the same issue as us. Mm -hmm. So I was outside chatting with Phil while you were trying to figure stuff out still. Right. Up pulls one of the employees for the campground. I'm not gonna say his name. Phil and I start talking to him about, okay, we don't have proper amperage. We can't run even one AC and it's really hot. We just got there, you know, we wanna get set up. We wanna cool down the RVs, we have pets. And he just sort of stared at us with a blank look on his face like, what do you mean to do about it? Phil and I were a little bit confused, so we kept asking this person, who shall remain nameless, so who do we talk to after like, hours? Because mind like, you, it it's was- It's like hoping you get to the right question that he can answer, you know? Yeah. Mind you, it was only 4 p.m., but the office staff decided to call it quits for the day an hour early. Usually they close at five. So we were like, okay, what do we do in this situation, Mr. RV Park employee? Who's your after who hours after person? Hour stuff, yeah. And he, and he still just wasn't, I don't know why, but he wasn't grasping Could what have been we were the saying. Heat. Maybe he was Maybe a little he bit... was overheated. <laughs> but so I don't know what happened or how it happened, but Phil started to walk away for some reason. And so I was continuing on trying to get the information on who do we talk to? Because we need to move sites, right? Uh -huh. And I said to him, listen, okay, this site isn't gonna work for us. It's not gonna work for them. What we need is to talk to somebody so we can try to find a site that actually works, that has enough juice to yeah. run our ACs. And he said to me, well, a lot of people in this park have real problems. Then he said, what do you want me to do? Play you the violin? He even went like this. He went like this. <laughs> can you imagine? I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I wasn't there because I would have gone So off. Phil, Phil heard a part of it as he was walking away and he just turned right around and walked back up and was kind of like, oh no, I'm not gonna yeah, let this Yeah, this is lie. gonna be a problem. And I sort of had to shut my mouth a little bit because that's when I started to get, like the steam started to come out of my ears because I could have, yeah. I think I could have gotten a lot angrier with this person than I even did. It was probably too hot to be angry. <laughs> to, no, but yeah. I mean, I, I was also in shock that Somebody was speaking to us in this way. There's a KOA next door. Maybe we call and see if we can get a spot let there. Let me tell you something. We've already paid. Well, they're going to refund our money. They're going to get a, a, re, a rejected charge on the credit card. Help us. Like, what? What? Oh, I can't. I can't. We are brand new. We just arrived to this park. We're paying for full hookups. Mm -hmm. And neither one of us have them no. or have the ability to run if, yeah. anything. If you've got 103 volts, you do not have full hookup. You no. don't have power no. because that will, will kill your ACs. Yeah. Uh, you know, our surge guard will shut off close to that. Mm -hmm. So you just can't run it, especially in that heat because these things work harder in the heat, meaning they need more amperage, more wattage. Yeah. So what I want to know is what are these problems that other people were having in the park that were worse than that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So Phil went up to the office. Stacy and I went to the gate because there were a couple employees working up there still. To, to get somebody to help us, right? Yeah, because the other guy playing the violin didn't do anything Right, else. right, he was busy <laughs> playing the violin. But, you know, in the meantime, I'm also looking up if there are other RV parks nearby because in my mind, I was like, I'm out. I, I just want to leave. But we went to the guard gate and we were told that, well, we were asked, how many ACs do you have? I said three. He said, well, you can't run all three ACs. It's like, 
That's exactly why we have three ACs. That's why we pay for full hookups, though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the situation where we need three ACs is why we bought three ACs. Right, right. It's not like it's some strange anomaly to want to run three ACs in a full hookup. Our RV third park. AC is back in the garage, which is our office, which is where we work full time, mm -hmm. and we need to have AC back there. So plus, you just have to have all three running all the time. We did a video on RVing in extreme heat, mm -hmm. and that was filmed at this location. Mm -hmm. So if you want to see some of the tips that we have check that out how we resolved it yeah eventually they found another site for each one of us not i don't think right next to each other but fairly close so we we both pull in happened again yep same voltage same problem i'm sure all you can hear is ac noise but that's all right i say we don't unhitch until we know like if no, we want to stay here i'm not hitching until no. we test everything no, I don't even mean that. Like, do we even want to stay in this park for 17 days? Do we want to stay here? This is... Well, we'll see. I mean, if we get hooked up, we have but power. What, but fine. that, let's say it works when we get there. Who's to say it doesn't blow in the middle of the night? Or now I don't trust this park to uh, be able to help us fix anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, if it's going to blow, it's going to blow during the day and not at night. But... We could be out filming for the day and Daisy be... Like, I'm scared. I'm scared. We could be out on the lake because we have plans to be in Lake Mead and like I, I We'll see what the power looks like. I'll, yeah. be able, I'll be able to see if the voltage is low. We need to tell we'll, we'll, hopefully we can get settled in tonight, cool down. This is a nightmare. Can I see how red my face is? And poor Daisy. I mean at least she gets to sit in the AC this whole time, but she's freaking out because we're nowhere to be found. So what did the KOA say? The KOA <laughs> <laughs> the KOA said that they have like three pull through. Oh, did you hear that burp? Three pull through sites right now that are 70 feet long. But he said he said they're going fast. People are coming in off the road, like done driving Saturday. for the day. Yeah. And he said he, he only has those for a couple days because next weekend is Fourth of July, so they're kind of booked up. That's what I was worried about Fourth of July. I just want something for the night so we can figure out what we're gonna we're do tomorrow. And. We can hit the pavement for all I can. Honestly, I, I'm not. It's not I know fun. it. And it's not worth it. While Phil and Stacy are getting moved to their third site, they called in an electrician or somebody to come over and try to help us out. It turns out this guy lives on site there. He's mm -hmm. a lineman. He does help them with their power stuff every now and then. And I explained to him, look, dude, if we've got 100, 203 volts and we need 1500 watts, it's gonna draw an amperage and it's gonna blow our breakers inside or it's gonna blow your breakers. Breakers are gonna blow mm -hmm. and it's possibly gonna damage our equipment. And he's like, I'm glad somebody knows what you're talking about. So yeah. he, he instantly understood the problem yeah. and he started looking into getting us moved to a third site also mm -hmm. in their luxury row or in whatever. In their XL row. Yeah. Which, it's really just, it's could, a parking lot. You could tell it used to be just a parking lot because there are still bumpers yeah. on the middle of it where the cars used to go like this. And it's block top. <laughs> so you're just scoping out the third site that we're going to give it Yeah, give we're going to give it a, try. a third site a try. If Goldilocks taught us anything, this one should be just right. That's <laughs> We are delirious. We have been here for three hours. We got here at three o'clock. It is now six o'clock and we have not yet been able to set up. It is still, um, the truck says it's 122. My watch says it's 114. Um, the truck says 122. 122. <laughs> Wish us luck, you guys. This has been no unlike, unlike nothing we've ever experienced before. Yeah, three and a half years, we've never had problems like this. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to get out and watch the trailer swing? No, I don't see anything here that's a problem. Not even that, the rock. Nah. You want me to watch this though, right? Right? No, I don't think we're going to get too close to that. Let me check the back. Mm -hmm. I get it. Yeah, we're good. So the site was all black. Black top, so that's not going to be a positive thing. But at this point, I was like, I don't care if the if the electric works and yeah. everything's good. I don't even care anymore. I just want it to work so we can cool off and get our house in order. Mm -hmm. And so we pulled in, and it finally seemed like it was going to be workable. Yeah, it still wasn't great. It wasn't 120 or 100, even 118 volts. Mm -hmm. It was still around the one... 
115, 114, but certainly a, a good sight better than 103. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it was about 100 degrees inside the RV. So we had a, a lot of work to do to, to cool it off in here for it to just be livable. The sun was going down and it was gonna, it was starting to cool down to a nice like 115, 110. Yeah. <laughs> we were really trying to pull out all the stops and just come up with some ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the ideas was, well, I, I got to get the center AC cooled off a little bit. So I was pulling off the rear side of the shroud, which is the cooling side and that helped a little bit i also realized hey it looks like i haven't done maintenance on this in a while we do have mm -hmm. uh, an ac maintenance video that we did a couple years ago everything is still the same as how we do it now oh yeah nothing's so, changed it's, it's right. real easy maintenance and mm -hmm. you should do it really before every every summer trip or where you're going right. to where it's hot and you're going to need your acs mm -hmm. to be but you did clean off the coils and mm -hmm. stuff like that a little dirty we were also having problems with keeping the refrigerator cold enough. We lost all the food in our refrigerator and freezer because it got to about 46 and that's danger zone. It did cool it to 101 from 111 in here, but it's it's starting to build back up. So, it's so hot, we don't even have to toast pop We tarts. don't, we don't. We just put them right on the counter and, here and they cook. And, oh, and now our fridge is at 40, like our food is basically garbage now. Yeah. These RV fridges are convenient. The ones that go from propane to electric like ours do, they're just not great. And honestly, our next RV will have a residential fridge, an inverter, and good batteries. Mm -hmm. But they're tough to keep cool in the summer in the super high heat, no matter what you do. You rigged up a big box fan outside mm -hmm. to blow on the outside of the uh, refrigerator. Yeah, the first thing I did was make sure that everything was functioning properly on the fridge. I made sure the fans were running, made sure there wasn't any blockage. We do have an RV refrigeration maintenance mm -hmm. video also, so we were kind of following those steps. Uh, everything was fine. It was just so stinking hot that mm -hmm. it was just tough. So I wanted to give it some extra cooling. I tried putting a fan at the bottom and blowing in uh, but then I put the fan at the top blowing out yeah because that's the cycle right top to, you know heat rises and uh, that helped some we were able to just barely keep it within tolerable yeah limits. we didn't really stock up on any groceries that could be dangerous for us to eat if, a chicken if <laughs> <laughs> heavens no if we actually really had some great times while we were in Vegas after we got all these kinks worked out mm -hmm. and actually cooled off a little bit <laughs> we had a lot of fun oh we yeah we did a lot of great things while we were in Vegas we can't wait to share them with you we thought we would just get all the negative crap out of the way first <laughs> and, and just take care of that because it was a bad bad travel day for us and we want you guys to know if you're traveling to places with extreme temperatures in the summertime make sure that you find out if their power grid can handle your ac units because mm -hmm. that's a big big deal yeah and if you want to see more about how we dealt with it and all the little tricks we kind of had to invent and come up with mm -hmm. uh go watch that video we'll link it at the end of this one and also down below yeah the rv parks management was very nice mm -hmm. and very helpful and apologetic and they did step up and they gave us a good discount on our time that we stayed there so that was very nice of them they understood that they put us in a bad situation and they also apologize for the way we were spoken to when we first got there. I think that, you know, some people just have bad days. We all have them. So, you know. Yeah, that's why we're not going to show the guy or call him out yeah. by name or anything like that. It's just, that's not our style. We're not into that kind of drama. We do want to make known, though, that this is something to look out for. Mm -hmm. in, in high temperature areas, just be ready to do some research on whether or not they can support your yeah. RV. Just call, call them and say, uh, do you have good 120 volt service? And they're probably going to be like 120 what? Yeah. But just ask them if they can find out for you and, you know, maybe read the reviews online. We are sorry for the negativity in this video, <laughs> but we hope that our next video makes up for it because we have a lot of fun. And we hope you can learn from our experiences.